Hi there. Now, here we have a question on the equilibrium of a rigid body, which uh, I'll read through for you, but at any point you might want to pause the video. And when you come back, I'll give you the numerical solution and then I'll work through the problem. So we've got here a beam AB, which has a length of 15 metres. The beam rests horizontally in equilibrium on two smooth supports at the points P and Q where AP is 2 metres and QB is 3 metres. When a child of mass 50 kilograms stands on the beam at A, the beam remains in equilibrium and is on the point of tilting about P. When the same child of mass 50 kilograms stands on the beam at B, the beam remains in equilibrium and is on the point of tilting about Q. The child is modelled as a particle and the beam is modelled as a non-uniform rod. And what we've got to do is to, part one, find the mass of the beam. And in part two, find the distance of the centre of mass of the beam from A. All for eight marks. So, as I say, if you'd like to have a go at this, haven't done so already, I'll just give you a moment to pause the video. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. So the answers, first of all, they are in part one, the mass is 25 kilograms and the distance to the centre of mass of the beam from A is six metres. OK, well, I'll now show you how I went about solving this problem. So first of all, what I'd need to do is just draw out the beam okay and I've done it a couple of times here to illustrate both situations for when this child sits at both ends of the beam. So we've got the beam and we've got it supported two meters from the end A and three meters from the end B and we don't know the weight of the beam which would be mg. And so I'm just going to place it somewhere on the rod. Let's just say we place it here. It won't be in the middle, okay, because it's not necessarily a uniform beam. So we'll just put that there and we'll just say that's mg newtons, m being the mass, okay, g being the acceleration due to gravity. And it will obviously be in the same place in this situation here. So we'll just mark that then as mg newtons. And we've got to find the distance of the centre of mass of the beam from A. So I'm going to call that distance X. OK, so I mark it in there. That's X. So that's what we're going to have to find later on. And again, we'll mark that distance here as X. What else will we need? Well, let's start to talk about this child of mass 50 kilograms then. When... The child stands on the beam at A, we'll put her weight in, so that would be 50G acting downwards here, OK, 50G Newtons. We're told that the beam remains in equilibrium but is on the point of tilting about P. So what will happen is it's going to tilt about this point and it will just be lifting off of here. So there'll be a reaction at this point here, acting upwards, which I'll call R, with a little subscript there, P, RP Newtons. But there won't be a reaction here. As I say, this is just on the point of lifting off of this support here at Q. Now, if we turn to this beam here, when the child now stands on the beam at B, then the weight will be 50 G newtons acting down here. But this time we're told that it tilts about Q. So therefore it's just lifting off of this support at P. So there'll be no contact force here. There'll only be a contact force at this point here, which I'm going to call RQ. RQ newtons then. So there would be my diagrams I would set up first of all then. Now to solve a problem like this, what I'm going to do for part one is we're going to look at taking moments. 
we'll look at this rod first of all and we'll take moments about the point P. And the reason I'm taking moments about point P is because that would mean that this force here would not get involved in the equation because it passes through the point that I'm taking moments about. So it has no turning effect. So we'll take moments then about P. So we'll just say that there. And we need a sense. We need a positive sense. It doesn't matter which way we take, but I'm going to take anti-clockwise as positive. So when I'm looking at the moments, remember moment is force times the perpendicular distance to the point that we're turning about. So if we start with the 50g here, okay, that force there, 50g, it's going to want to turn the beam around like this in an anti-clockwise sense. So it's going to be positive. 50g would be the force and the distance to P is 2. So that's the moment about that P for the weight of the child. Now, the next one is the weight of the beam. And that's going to be mg. And the distance that it's going to be back to p is going to be x minus the 2 meters here. This distance here is x minus 2. So it'll be x minus 2. And the weight of the beam wants to turn the beam about P in a clockwise sense. So that's going to be negative. And they're the only moments acting on the beam about P. And the beam is in equilibrium so there shouldn't be any resultant moment. So that's going to be equal to zero. So we just tidy this equation up. We could divide through by g at this point, g's in every term, so we can cancel those g's out there. And if we do that, 50 times 2 then gives us 100. And then if we expand the bracket, we've got minus mx, and then we've got plus 2m, and that will equal 0. And I'll call that equation 1. I've got two unknowns in it, so I'm not going to get very far with this, m and x. So it looks like we're going to need simultaneous equations then. And we get our other equation by looking at this beam here and doing moments about the point Q. Because just like this one here, if we take moments about Q, we're not going to have RQ in our equation. So again, it doesn't matter which way I take as positive, but I'm going to go in a clockwise sense this time. OK, so do experiment with this. It's a good idea just to take the other directions. OK, you should still end up with the same answer at the end of the day. So what equation are we going to get? Well, let's start then with the moment of the weight of the child. So it's going to be 50 G again, 50 G multiplied by the distance back to Q, which is 3. So 50G then times 3. And now we've got to look at the moment of the weight of the beam about Q. So it's going to be mg multiplied by this distance here. So what is that distance? Well, if we've got 3 metres here, we know then that the beam is 15 metres. So therefore, the distance from A to Q must be 12 meters. So A to Q is 12 meters, but we've got X in here, so this must be a distance of 12 minus X, that distance there, okay? So when it comes to the moment then of the weight here, it's going to be mg times 12 minus X, and it's going to want to turn the beam in an anti-clockwise sense negative to this one. So it's going to be minus then mg multiplied by 12 minus x. So that's the resultant moment, but the beam's in equilibrium. So therefore that resultant moment must equal zero. And now I can see that I can divide through by g, okay, in every term. So got that. 
And now just cleaning this up, 50 times 3 is 150. And expanding the bracket here gives us minus 12m plus mx. And that equals 0. So that's my second equation. So I've just got to solve these simultaneously. And I can see that I could eliminate minus mx with mx here if I were to add these two equations together. So I'm going to do then equation 1 plus equation 2. And if we do that, we've got 100 plus 150 gives us 250. Minus mx then plus mx, that goes to 0. And then we've got 2m minus 12m, so that's going to be minus 10m. And it's just a simple case now of 0 plus 0 is 0. And rearrange this now to give us, therefore, 10m equals 250. And if we divide both sides by 10, it follows from here that m equals 25. OK, and so that would be 25 kilograms. So there we go, that's the first part. And now we move on to the next part. Well, this is going to be fairly straightforward because now we've got the mass. We just need to substitute this into, say, equation 1 or equation 2. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to sub, let's say, m equals 25 into, let's say we'll go into equation 1, all right, in 1. And... If we do that, what have we got? we got 100, so we just say, therefore, we got 100 minus mx, so that's going to be minus 25x, and then plus 2m, so m is 25, so it's going to be 2 times 25, which is 50, and that's going to equal 0. So, therefore, what we've got is 150, and if we add 25x to both sides, that's going to equal 25x. And clearly, if we divide both sides by 25, then x will equal 150 divided by 25, and that's going to be 6. 6 metres. So the distance from A is 6 metres. OK?